Having seen what suffix trees are, let's now talk about how to build them. And of course, when we first saw what suffix trees were, we thought of them in terms of starting from a suffix tri and then making it smaller. So uh, coalescing paths of nodes that have only one child and then replacing the uh, labels of the edges with these pairs of integers. So I suppose one way we could build the suffix tree would be to follow exactly this method where first we build the suffix try. We see how to do that. That's pretty obvious, right? We just want to iterate through the suffixes and then for each character of the suffix we want to add the appropriate new edge and node going down from the root, right? So we kind of already know how to do that. So we could do that first, build the suffix try, then coalesce the non-branching paths just like we said we needed to do in order to achieve big O of M number of nodes and then replace the edge labels and the leaf labels with what we know we need them to be. So we could do it this way. In other words, start from the big tri data structure and work our way to the smaller final tree data structure. However, this of course has a bottleneck, which is that that initial tri data structure is too big, right? That data structure is big O of M squared space. The size of the data structure in terms of the number of nodes and edges is growing quadratically with the length of the input string. So it would seem that we would rather not do it this way. We don't want to build the big data structure first and then refine it into the smaller data structure. Rather, what maybe we would, what we would rather do would be to start from scratch and build up the suffix tree data structure, right, this one, build that data structure up starting from nothing so that at no point do we get to to something that's bigger than M, big O of M squared. So that's what we're gonna see how to do. Instead of starting with the big try and trying to make that smaller, we can start from scratch, from nothing, and grow the tree directly and just skip the try. Don't even build the try. Okay, and the basic idea for how we're gonna do that is we're gonna start from nothing. We're gonna add information one suffix at a time to the tree and elaborate the tree, get a, get a more complicated tree as we go, okay? And if we do this from scratch and eventually end up at the full tree, then at no point did we have something that was bigger than the final full tree. And so we can claim that this overall process must have been big O of M, because if we end up with something that's big O of M and at no intermediate point do we have anything that was bigger, then it must be that this overall process was big O of M space. Okay, so here's a better idea for how to build the suffix tree. We will do even better than this idea later, but anyway, this is an idea that has that property that we're gonna start from scratch and we're gonna build the tree bit by bit. And the way we're gonna do is we'll do this is we'll start with the longest suffix, the suffix that consists of the entire text T, and we'll make a trivial tree data structure that just has a root, it has a root right here, has a leaf, and then it has one edge corresponding to that suffix. And then we'll add more suffixes and more suffixes, and as we add more suffixes from longest to shortest, we'll elaborate this tree, adding branching, adding more leaves, etc. Okay, so let me be very explicit about the first few steps of this tree building process for this example, our you know favorite example of ABA, ABA dollar sign. So let's just do the first few steps. Okay, and I'm gonna, for now, when I draw my tree as it's growing, I'm gonna draw strings on the edge labels. Now we know that the edge labels ultimately will not be strings, they'll just be these integer pairs. But trust me that that's not a major complication in the algorithm and for clarity it's gonna make more sense for me to draw strings on the edges. Okay, so like we said, when we start, we make a kind of simple tree, really it's just a root and a leaf connected by an edge, corresponding to the longest suffix. So let's do that first. So here's my root, here's my leaf, there's gonna be one big long edge, and that edge label is going to be the entire string, right? The longest suffix is the entire string. So I'm gonna write it sort of like from top to bottom like this, A, B, A, A, B, a, 
dollar sign down to there. Okay, so that's what the sort of intermediate tree looks like when we've just added the longest suffix and we haven't gone any farther than that. Okay, so now starting from that, so now starting from that, so again, let's So now starting from that, so let's put in that first suffix again. Here's my root, there's my leaf, there's my edge, a, b, a, a, b, a dollar. All right, when I go to add the second longest suffix, that's going to be this suffix, b, a, a, b, a dollar. Okay, so I start at the root and I want to add uh, an edge for that suffix, and it has no shared prefix with the first one that I added, so it's going to come down off the root as well. So we're just going to draw basically another edge down here, and its label is going to be B A A B A dollar, like that. Okay, so there's the tree when we have our, our first and second longest suffix in there. So when we move on to the third suffix, and let me just copy this over, then the third suffix is the one that starts a a b a dollar, and you'll see there is a shared prefix between this third suffix and the first one we added, because they both start with a, then the shared prefix ends. So if I walk down according to the third suffix, adding it as I go, I'm going to get down to here, and then I'm going to need to add a new internal node to that tree because now I branch off at the next character and the next suffix is a not b so I'm gonna have a new sort of edge here and I'm gonna spell out the rest of that suffix which is a b a dollar okay so this is the process for each new suffix going from the long suffixes to the short ones I'm going to start at the root, I'm going to walk down according to the characters of my suffix, and if I were going to fall off, instead of falling off, I create a new internal node if needed, and then I draw a new edge to a leaf corresponding to the rest of the suffix that I'm trying to add. And at each step of this process, I am adding either just one new node to the tree, as I did here, right there, one new leaf node, or I'm adding two new nodes to the tree. Like I did here, I added both an internal node and a leaf node. But no more than that. All right, so the amount that I'm actually augmenting the tree for each new suffix is pretty limited in terms of the node and edge structure of the tree. I'm only adding up to one or two new nodes. Okay, one leaf and possibly one internal edge. Okay, so this is an algorithm that has the property that we were looking for, which is that at every step up to when I have the final tree, I have something that's smaller than the final tree, right? It's only at the very end that I finally have a complete suffix tree. And therefore, we can argue that this overall process is big O of M space, right? The final result is big O of M space, and at every step leading to the final result, I have something that's smaller. So it must be the overall thing is big O of M space. However, we cannot argue that it's big O of M time to do this because the hard work of what we're doing is that for each new suffix, we have to walk down according to the characters of that suffix in order to figure out how to change the tree. Right? We had to walk down, like in the case of that third suffix, we had to walk down and then discover that the shared prefix ended and we needed a new internal node, etc. But we have to, if you think of the nested loops of this algorithm, the outer loop is a loop over suffixes, and the inner loop is a loop over characters of each suffix. Overall, the amount of effort that we have to expend in those loops is quadratic. Okay, so it's not a linear time algorithm, even though it is a linear space algorithm. It's a quadratic time algorithm. Okay? So, Method two, what I'm, what I'm calling this method that we were just describing, allows us to build um, uh, uh, the overall suffix tree. We start by building a single edge tree representing just the longest suffix, and then for subsequent suffixes we layer in each new suffix, augmenting the tree at each step to include that shorter suffix. Okay, and this has the property we want on space, 
but we could hope for better in terms of the time complexity. We, we could hope for something better than quadratic. So how do we accomplish that? Well, there are a few different algorithms for doing this, but one of them is kind of the most famous one, which is Ukonin's algorithm. This is an algorithm for constructing suffix trees. And I've sh I'm showing you here one of the figures from this original paper describing Ukonin's algorithm from 1995. And the whole algorithm is a bit too complex to go through in detail here, but I'll give you a few of the important facts. Okay, this is a very practical and widely used algorithm, and it requires big O of M time and space. So remember, we already, with that simple idea, had achieved big O of M space, but, but, we, but we did not achieve big O of M time. We needed quadratic time. But Ukonin's algorithm requires big O of M time and space, linear time and space. It's the most widely used, though not the only algorithm that has this big O of M time and space property. There are others, like ones by Wiener and McCrate, that have similar properties, but they're not quite as widely used, I would say, as Ukonin's algorithm. Like the algorithm that we walked through, Ukonin's algorithm starts sort of from scratch and builds a larger and larger tree. It's actually building something called an implicit suffix tree, which is what is depicted in figure one there. We won't go, go into the details of that, but it, it is similar in spirit in that it's starting from scratch and building up a bigger and bigger tree. And it uses and outputs along with its final answer this additional part of the tree called suffix links, which we haven't talked about yet, but we are, we are going to see a little bit later. Um, so it's another advantage of Ukonin's algorithm is that you get, and in fact it very much needs, in order for the algorithm to work properly, it needs these things called suffix links. Okay, so to summarize, good methods exist to build this suffix tree incrementally and from scratch, eventually reaching the final big O of M size tree. We saw a very simple way of doing it uh, in uh, the demonstration I, I showed, but um, that method was big O of M squared time, what we called method two is big O of M squared time. Ukonin's algorithm is an example of an algorithm that achieves big O of M time and space, which makes for an incredibly practical uh, algorithm for building suffix trees. We're now out of, we don't have to do quadratic anything, right? The data structure is no longer quadratic space. Even building the data structure is now linear time and linear space.